And when I heard this last night, I was like, whoa. It hit me so hard. I had to, I had to hear it over again. I had Bible study. I had Bible study last night, but I just wanted to get a few things off my chest because I was I was in tears, shit chatting. So hopefully this word helped me, and hopefully it can help someone who's watching this. And if it does, feel free to share this with one friend who you think it will help as well. But we were talking about essentially we often talk to God. We, we no, not talk to God. We have it was basically the basis of how to pray to God, not how to pray and not how to pray at God. And this quote will make sense in due time and God's grace. But many are called and few are chosen. And this verse has been yelling at me for the past like <coughs> few months and I, I, I hear I hear the calling now but you have to walk in the dominion and authority and trust in God and his walk that he has for you and it was just so beautiful because just like talking about decree and declaring like the things that we want to overcome like I decree and declare I'm free of debt I decree and declare that deliverance over myself and over my family like to decree and declare let's give you the hardcore definition to declare and decree essentially means an official order of authority and what pastor what um my pastor had said and he put in the chat because this is over zoom we want um we meet it's rest ministries they meet every Sunday as a group at 7 p.m. No, sorry, excuse me, 6 p.m. for a group Bible study. They have a men's kingdom Bible study at on Monday and then a women's Bible study on Tuesday at 7 p.m. And it says here, complete deliverance for our children's families, friends, breakthrough, supernatural, increases in finances, open heavens, encounter with angels. Encounters with the Holy Spirit called forward rivers and dry places to man in the kingdom come now we should all walk in the dominion authority and power call forward dreams and visions that will reveal destin destinies call forward destinies helpers come come into agreement with every angel every angel that has been assigned to move on your behalf now command a mighty move of God over the nations Supernatural healings, miracles, divine connections, call forward clarity, call forward the harvest to manifest in the lives of God's people. I am the head and not the tail. I am blessed in and out of the city. Everything I touch shall prosper. I am a lender and not a borrower. I declare no lack in my life. I claim victory in every situation in my life. Speak to every mountain to move now. Speak to the wind and command it to be still. Take us higher and deep in the depths of who you are. Call forward every business, book intervention, call forward blueprints, ideas, healing, and the incurable diseases. And then Jeremiah 29, 11. This is probably one of my favorite verses through this period of my, this season, in this period of my life, because it sticks with me so much. And Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. The season that God puts you through is not because he wants to hurt you. God will never do anything to hurt you or put you into harm's way. God is teaching you a bigger picture and allowing you to grow and develop yourself into the things that you can't see. And I think it's so beautiful to know that we have such a bigger purpose that we can't even, even fathom. And we think we have like these little desires in the world we live in in the worldly world that we live in but our desires are so small in comparison to what god has planned for us and that's beautiful once you can really come to that conclusion and really see it for yourself even though it's it's you can't just be like boom i'm gonna see it but it's just like god has so much more planned for you than you could even imagine 
And it's like we think these little tiny things, like, oh, I want this or I want that. But God has so much more in store for you. And the prayer I said after this was, Father God, I ask you to give the... the and the prayer um, I had written was, Father God, I ask that you give us the strength and power to stand firm and spread gospel and be on fire for your spirit. Father God, I enrich in your faith with health, with wealth and love in Jesus' name. And... Another theme of this Bible study last night was literally coming to God, coming to Jesus as a child. Having childlike faith where you come to him <coughs> with no knowledge, just coming to him as you are. And God will just accept you with such open arms. And then I'll just read you the rest of my notes from the Bible study. It's only like another page and a half. But another prayer was, I pray against the religious spirit that is blocking and, blocking and confusing others from walking confidently into their marketplace ministries that God has waiting for you. God, I ask you to clear my vision and allow me to see myself for how you see me. And I think that's such a beautiful thing to ask God for. Not only that, but asking God for you to encounter him and hear him and have an intimate moment with him is a beautiful thing to ask for. Because I think once you have that Experience and you have that intimate moment with God Himself, with Jesus, you see light in a different way. And you you just see the beauty of fulfilling his purpose. And I, I know I say this a lot in a lot of my episodes, but fulfilling his purpose, you can't worry about how you're gonna get there, what your next steps is. When you focus on your purpose, everything will also, everything else will come to you without question. Psalm 119 verse 2 says, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and seek him with his whole heart. And another thing Pastor was saying was, you know, you can you can go to you can go to discipleship class, right? You can go to his church on Sunday, pray on Monday, and then if you're acting in your old ways Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then you're you're not you're still acting in your old ways. You can be saved, you can be baptized, but it's like you have to be disciplined. You have to have consistency in yourself to overcome the temptation of the world that we live in. To live through and fully surrender yourself to the life of Jesus Christ. To the life of Jesus himself. It says we will forge ahead the battle in his... It, it says we will forge ahead the battle is his. It's already won. When you surrender your problems to the Lord, it's done. They're no longer yours. We hold on to the things. We, we grieve so much. And again, easier said than done. Obviously, like, yes, I'm not saying not to grieve. Preface, I'm not saying not to grieve. But I'm saying we stress about things that are not in our control. We will forge ahead. The battle is his. It's already won. God's already taken care of it, but you just have to trust and put your full faith into Him that He's going to take care of it. When you stress and stress and stress and go over and over and back and forth, back and forth of things, you're taking, you're trying to take control of something that you don't own. When you give it to God and you live, like when you give it to God and you just let Him have it, He will take care of it. It says, "Eternal peace is ours. Be still and cast your worries onto Me, for I am God." God literally can do anything. I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me, right? Eternal peace can be ours. We can be at peace. Because at the end of the day, we're going back to the kingdom, right? We come onto this earth to fulfill the purpose that God has for us. Eternal peace can be ours. But you need to be calm. You need to be still and cast your worries onto him onto God and he will remove all of it for you and then my favorite favorite, favorite part continue to have childlike faith our desires are already there we must give grace and time let go and let God all that you cannot control give it to God for I am the end I am the beginning fear not to let people who no longer serve you go 
they're no longer in your life for a reason. And it can be so hard to remove yourself from friendships that you had from, from childhood, from kindergarten, from first grade, from however many years it may have been. You're like, that's my best friend, but what they're doing no longer aligns with me. I'm trying to fulfill my life through Christ and these people are doing things that I no longer agree with. They're smoking hookah, throwing bottles, just doing all this stuff. And again, it may not be something that you're aligned with anymore. Maybe we all have been in situations where we've backslid, we've gone back to our old ways, we've done things we're not proud of, but it's the part where you can disassociate yourself and move forward to not be in those situations anymore. You can always still have love for somebody, right? But it doesn't mean because you don't do those things that you don't love them still. It all comes with having grace for yourself in this process and it's not easy detaching from something that you were always used to that you only know. But it's important for you to remove yourself from situations that no longer serve you. And it's still something, that's something that I struggle with today, moving, removing myself from situations, from people who I no longer align with. And coming from a people, people pleaser mentality, I'm like, I don't want to hurt anybody. But it's like, those people just no longer align with what is best for me, what I stand for and what I walk with. And that's okay. You need to move by faith. Remember during times when you can't hear God or feel his presence, remember to praise him. He's such a beautiful, awesome God. He's a loyal, honest, merciful creator. Our Father, he is everything good. Sometimes when you can't hear God, you're crying to God, you're like, God, like, why? Why is it that I can't hear you? Like, you're having all these cries out to him and you, you just don't understand. Like, you just don't hear anything, right? Even in Bible study yesterday, I, I was sitting there and I was like, God, like, please, like, tell me a word, tell me a word. And usually I, I go back and forth with God and I can hear him what he's saying. But yesterday I couldn't. I couldn't hear him. And I was like, God, what did I do? What did I do wrong? Like, God, he must not love me anymore and I had to realize God is telling me to listen he's telling me to listen to him he's saying that I talk a lot I talk too much but I don't listen enough and it took it took his silence for me to realize that that often we talk more than we listen to the people around us when if I just listened I would hear his voice but I wasn't listening clearly your silence will speak wonders, but you need to move by faith and trust in him to what he, for what he has for you. And on top of that, when you are in a situation, whether you need confirmation from God, create a past with God and he will show you. He will confirm it for you. Be faithful and be a good steward. And God will expand your territory. I want to leave you with this. Even if you feel like you are in the wrong place, God will place you where you're meant to be. And when I heard this last night, I was like, whoa. It hit me so hard. I had, I had to hear it over again. And he repeated, my pastor repeated himself, right? He said, even if you feel like you are in the wrong place, God will place you where you are meant to be. One more time. Even if you feel like you are in the wrong place, God will place you where you are meant to be. Wait. Silence your mind and ask God to posturize your heart to receive the gift that he has for you. Ask God to show you the clarity you need if you're confused or need clarity on your life. I just pray that God speaks wisdom and clarity and purpose over your life. And I hope that this helped you. And if it did help you, I would love if you share this to one person that you think that it could also help. I hope you have a blessed day and I will see you guys next week.
Um, I hope you guys have a blessed day. Comment down below one thing that you, that helped you in this episode. And with that, I will see you guys later this week.